Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Vanka Rosmorduk from uh, CLS in France. We will talk you about an educational program. If you don't understand my English, you can uh, activate subtitles for the translation. And uh, I'm accompanied by uh, Daniel Duster from the French Space Agency. Hi, everybody. I'm Danielle Dusterk, and as Venka said, I work for CNES, uh, the French uh, space uh, agency, and I am responsible for the educational project uh, on environment, mainly oceanography and atmosphere. So today we will present uh, you the uh, first, we, uh, I will introduce the program Argonautica with a short video that I will comment. Then uh, Venka will uh, uh, show two examples of how we can follow an animal and a, a, and a big one. And she will explain why she chose this uh, particular uh, beacon and uh, animal. And then if we have time, we can, before a conclusion, uh, speak a little bit of future collaboration. So uh, we will start with uh, the video, Argonautica video. It's a two minute, two and some seconds. So Argonautica is a project uh, which was introduced in 20 years ago <laughs> by CNES. And the idea is to uh, study ocean, uh, rivers and, uh, and lakes. and uh, connection with satellite. So we uh, provide resources for the classes and uh, we have three different parts in this project. And at the end of the year, we will have a, a school presentation like the images that you, you will see. First part is uh, following the, uh, the animals. It's called Argonimo. And you, we have some, uh, you will have on the example uh, presented by Venka, the more explanation about that. We will follow animals, animals uh, which are followed by the by scientists and the data is given by the scientists. And then we have another part which is Argoceon. Then there you have the uh, school presenting the projects in following beacons in the, in the sea. And then we have a, a part which is called Argo Hydro, uh, with a, uh, we study uh, beacons in the rivers uh, and lakes. And uh, we also have for the Argo Hydro and Argo Ocean parts, uh, we can build, the, the student can, can build their own uh, buoy, like you see on the, on the image. And all this data that they get from institu all this in situ uh, data can be compared with the satellite data. And here you have the web, the web uh, which will give all the data. So you, you will learn more about the, the, the platform, the data platform, and how to follow the animals with Venka. She will present the second part. So I will talk to you about uh, Pegas, a beach loving boy. This boy was uh, launched in the frame of uh, high school project uh, not very far from Toulouse in Rhodes. Uh, they want to study the Liguro Provencal Catalan currents and its variations. That's their objectives and it has been so for the past uh, 10 years. To do that, they've built several uh, buoys 
we lend them the 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 co coverage and the adding uh, internal cards and electronics in them, and then they are launched. The latest of them was called Medus in 2019. And uh, here are the students with uh, the boy and uh, zoom on it. So you see there's uh, some kind of uh, uh, things to load it so that it's uh, follow mostly the currents and not so much the winds. And uh, they went to Banyuls nearby uh, the Spanish border to launch it. And with Medus, uh, we gave them Pegas, a little uh, boy meant for uh, diversity of uh, goals. And so as they can have some more data when following, because uh, to be honest, as uh, built uh, in uh, boys by the, the high schools tend to, to think. So to have something lasting longer, we are giving them another boy. So Medus uh, sadly only lasted about seven days and was lost. We don't really know why. And so we will uh, more uh, focus about uh, um, Pegas and I will show you on the website how you can uh, get Pegas uh, data. So if you are going to the Argonautica website. You can have uh, either the French or the English version. Uh, don't know which language you you better master, but we will keep on uh, English. And uh, on the website, you have uh, data and data access. So we will go to the data access. And uh, remember, it was in 2019, so I will go back to earlier years. Something like uh, 2017 up to now. And we are following a boy, so I click on boy. And uh, it doesn't take, it didn't take my choice. So, okay. Bon. <laughs> I'll type in. <laughs> Demo effect. Okay, so you see here yeah, now the six boys with the six boys we followed till uh, May 2019, and among them Pegas 2019, and here yeah, you can see the map of its track. Uh, you can see the map uh, with uh, all the, um, the path of this beacon and uh, you will notice it's very coarse. So if we get back in time, you can see that uh, early July, for example, you can have this path, which is shorter, of course. And notice also the other kind of data, the other kind of map made mostly from satellites. 
You've got chlorophyll map, you've got ocean topography, the currents computed from that, uh, the variation of this topography, the currents, the satellite sea surface temperature, also some winds. And with everything uh, provided there, so you've got also the wave heights. And you can view also those data through Google Map, which enable you to is more easily do some uh, overlay of the track. with the, the data. So if I zoom in here, I can uh, overlay with the ocean topography and maybe you'll notice that you see the path is more or less following uh, something of the same uh, value in this topography, which uh, is uh, a reason the currents are going around those hills and valleys that uh, we can observe from satellites, from uh, altimetry satellites from space. So going there, you can see if you zoom even again, and show only the map, you will see that here, we are very, very close to the sea, to the shore. And uh, in fact, the beacon went to, to shore and was retrieved and given to Sasema. And uh, then we had some uh, rescue. rescue and relaunch. Here's a photo of uh, somebody from Sasema launching it back. In fact, somewhere uh, like uh, here, a little later than, uh, than the current uh, view. Now, if uh, we are going back to the website, we can have a look a bit later. And also look at uh, Google Earth. Here we a bit later, and you'll notice a new thing that uh, it was launch the launch was done the first launch was done here, around here, and here it's it went back again to a beach in Valencia. I would have liked to show you the second launch by Sasema, but I don't have uh, the photo. The only thing I can tell you is that it was done from an helicopter during uh, an exercise. And uh, Sosib explained me the currents exp uh, was uh, in explaining th those repeated beaching. And then to be to uh, complete the story, in fact, if we can, oops, if we can look at uh, the the last part of the track, you'll see that it went again. Well, mostly it was retrieved uh, within the ocean by a, a boat, which uh, sent it uh, to. Uh, uh, nautical club here and uh, the last uh, of the story was that uh, one of my colleagues was uh, around and uh, she uh, retrieved it and here yeah, is a little boy kid uh, with the boy and now it has been relaunched uh, again so that was the first example Second one 
is uh, another one on uh, a turtle. The turtle is called Vita and uh, it was um, cured and uh, uh, freed by uh, the Balear um, Rescue Center for Turtles with uh, SOSIB uh, tracking it and SOSIB uh, um, permitted the Argonautica to track the turtle within the project. So if we have a look at Vita's pass, Still on the website again on the website so this time it will be a turtle and not a boy and if we look at Vita, Vita is a logged turtle, Careta Careta in, in Latin, which was uh, released uh, late uh, July 2019. If from Balea Islands, from Mallorca. Here we see the first point, the first location. Then uh, he did uh, a little tour around the Mediterranean. It went away from uh, Mallorca. And which is interesting, it's uh, early October. We see it's close to Algeria and making a turn around. Now, if we come back to Google Earth to overlay the information, we see the last week of location here in red and if we look at the ocean topography underneath we see that it is going round that way which is uh, what is expected because if we we'll plot the currents you can compute from those data you see the currents are going that way in a clockwise sense of rotation. If we look at other data, we can look also at um, the chlorophyll. So turtle is not eating algae, but it's eating things that are eating them. So we can't see much on chlorophyll. Could also look at the sea surface temperature. That's some kind of similar fe feature, but less obvious on sea surface temperature. And this is something that uh, the kids are really doing, trying to compare those data with the tracks and trying to understand it. So now if we look a bit later on to the same turtle, Just one week later. We see the same uh, round things and we call it an eddy in oceanography. So it's it went uh, around it uh, full. Uh, it, made, it made the full round around the, uh, the, this eddy. And again, a week later, now it's going round on another another way, and continuing that way. And if we look again at the overlay and the ocean topography we see that this time it went not anti-clockwise sorry i said clockwise it's anti-clockwise but it went clockwise it went that way 
no, clockwise that way, then anti-clockwise that way. Again, something that is uh, valley in the ocean surface and the currents are going the other way and rotating the, um, in the other sense. And then again, over an uh, hill on the ocean. So those hills and valleys are about uh, 10 to 20 centimeters. You won't see them when you're in a boat, but the satellites are seeing them quite well with um, with a, a radar altimetry and uh, um, accuracy of uh, one to two centimeters in those measurements. So now, if we can look at the full track of our our, our Vita turtle. Don't know if you see it well, but it's the beginning of the the path. It's going slowly around, and then you'll notice it's going a little bit faster because the currents are faster around those eddies we saw, and then that's the kind of. Uh, understanding such a comparison can provide and uh, it's also a way of uh, having a better understanding of the behavior and life of the animals including threatened ones like uh, the sea turtles so even kids uh, as young as 11 to 20 years old have done such comparison mostly with chlorophyll because it's easier for them to make the link between nutrients and uh, turtles or animals. But uh, even quite young kids are able to understand those concepts and uh, make something interesting from it with the help, of course, of their teachers. And uh, well, the other point is that uh, this is something that we are continuing to do with uh, very recently we adopted Gloria. And uh, you can see Gloria made a little turnaround too. So I'm letting you try your, yourself on uh, in, uh, the comparisons. It's a bit less obvious to be honest. Thanks a lot, uh, Venka, for all this explanation. I just want to add something about cooperation. Uh, we, we were very glad to cooperate with you uh, on this uh, on these two examples that uh, Venka presented uh, with a, with a beacon that was uh, yeah, that you 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 dropped uh, uh, back after two times uh, uh, after she got on on shore and about this following of turtles and we also this year will uh, follow uh, some turtles like like Venka said uh, this is Gloria and also another which is Thunderbird and also I want to tell you about something I don't know if you know about uh, a big uh, sailing boat race uh, which is called Vendée Globe which uh, starts beginning of November and we are uh, partners. We partner with some skippers, and one of them is a is a Spanish one. It's called uh, um, Didac uh, Costa. And so we like to have some uh, cooperation with uh, schools for, with uh, Spanish schools uh, during this uh, this race. And during this race, uh, the, the skippers will uh, will have. Uh, uh, Cooperation will they will talk about the race and they with the schools, and they will uh, drop uh, boys also at some parts, interesting part in the Equator or in the um, 
<laughs> in the South Antarctic. So we, I don't know what you think about that, but we went to, maybe you have schools already uh, in your vicinity, uh, cooperating with you, or it, it would be interesting uh, to share our project uh, with them, if you, if you think it's interesting. Okay, this. Uh, so goodbye. Uh, Thank you for your attention, everybody. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to go through Sosema to ask us. Yeah, goodbye, everybody. Thanks for your uh, attention and uh, hope to see, to talk to you later, maybe, if you have any questions.